Hello, hello, Crossroads witches and other interesting magical beings. Today we're going to be getting the dirt on one of my favorite subjects, and that is using dirt in your magic as an energetic marker or as an attribute of the energies that have been in, infused into that dirt. Uh, I'm Low Country Conjurer, Southern Conjurer. Necromancy's been our specialty for several hundred years now. Uh, the goofer dust itself came from the Low Country area, which is the main part of that is uh, graveyard dirt. So we've been using dirts of footprints, crossroads, and cemeteries for a very long time. And that's why I have a book coming out on it in September. So we're going to talk about using dirts. I see this starting to get a little trendy where they're talking about you need dirt from nine places. You need dirt from four places. You need dirt from a bank. You need dirt from here, here, and here. Um, first of all, I want to start with they're all work great, but this is a magic you have to be very, very mindful of the actual attributes, the energies that are in that dirt. For example, a lot of times when we're doing uh, justice working, legal workings, uh, rest, one of the things they call for is the dirt from a judge's grave. Sounds good. What if he was a corrupt judge? Is that the energy you're looking for? Or what if he was a very fair judge? Is that the energy you're looking for? Just grabbing a judge's dirt does not satisfy the working. You need to know more. If you are working for corruption, you need a corrupt judge. If you're working for fairness, you need a fair judge. Another very common ingredient I know is dirt from a soldier's grave. I talk a lot about this. First, I do not think we should take that dirt at all, but I want you to be mindful of that we have some of our military folks who were drafted when you get into older people. They didn't want to be soldiers. They couldn't wait to come home. Did nothing to do with that uniform. You have others who enlisted, who spent a lifetime, who loved the military service. Two very different dirts here. Another common thing is dirt from a bank. Let me talk with you about you do not want to go get dirt from a failing bank, from a bank that is wrapped up in legal ease, from a bank that's, uh, you know, got 30 indictments against its investors. Don't bring that dirt home. But dirt from a really successful bank that's doing well, that's opening branches, that is paying good dividends, you want that dirt. Y'all starting to see what I'm talking about. You just can't be grabbing a handful of dirt, you know, and thinking, okay, I got it. My question back is, do you really have it? Do you really know what you have? A lot of times, like I said, mm, excuse me, y'all. Um, I've been seeing this, oh, you got to go get dirt from nine different places and a list of these nine places, and this is going to be bringing you prosperity and wealth. And not if it's from yucky places. You're just going to bring home things that are going to cause conflict, strife, and potentially, you know, drain your finances. So before you go collect dirt, we have this wonderful, mystical, magical tool called Google. Google it. Do some research. If you are looking for a good bank, do research for a good bank. You're looking for dirt from a hospital for healing. Again, you want a good hospital versus one that half of their doctors have federal indi indictments for malpractice. Nobody wants to take that dirt home. All right. Really look at the dirt you're bringing into your life. Dirt carries with it all of the universe. And in a handful of dirt is things in which are, are being, you know, brought into existence and things in which are dying. And with all of that is the memory of the dirt, the memory of its location, 
the energy that's been put into it. You know, I sometimes think of dirt as almost like this wonderful sponge that just gets filled up with all this energy. And if we're mindful, we can use it. Now, the best times to get dirt, first of all, safe and sane. Don't be running around places after midnight in questionable neighborhoods. Uh, I tell folks, you know, that's the first part. And they're like, oh, on a full moon and it has to be this, this, and this. Yeah, not if it ain't safe, it don't, you know. Uh, but typically, typically, and these are, the rules for harvesting and gathering dirt are ultimately yours to create. Historically, we know new moon, full moon, and dark moon were signifying times. So was dusk and dawn, and which are the liminal space. I like to gather my dirts in the dusk. All right, I love twilight hour. I found for me personally, it's a time that I vibe really well. And it's a good time to go gather up my workings, you know. And you may talk with another magical practitioner who says they love, you know, dawn, the early morning hour. All right. Uh, and so this is about tuning into what you feel good. But you can start looking at dirt completely differently, I hope, now after thinking about this, you know. And of course, if you were to in uh, graveyard dirts, do not be a dark tourist. If you do not have a cultural uh, a, a reason for having that dirt, a connection to that dirt, you ought not be taking it. We do not run around grabbing strangers' dirts, all right? Uh, is my one little thing I want to say, because I see a lot of people are like, ooh, graveyard dirt, ooh, graveyard dirt. If you are wanting to learn to work with graveyard dirt, learn to work with that type of a necromancy energy, I encourage people to consider getting a handful of dirt from right at the entrance to the graveyard as a way to welcome spirit, a way to welcome ancestral connections into your space in a very safe and sane way. Again, these are big words. We always need to be using them. If you're getting dirt from a crossroads, do not stand in front of cars and things like that. All right, witches, I also, the shout out, the reminder, I will be at Mystic South in Atlanta, Georgia. The House of Witchcraft is hosting a hospitality suite where you can come. We are having a party Saturday night. We'd love for all of you to be there. Uh, please go check that out at mysticsouth.com. And of course, an extra special thanks to all of my subscribers and my supporters. Mwah, mwah, mwah is all I'm going to say to you right now. And with that said, get out there, fly those brooms, have a bright, blessed day. And as always, amen, bless be, ashe, and a bobo.